There were two more murders 15 miles away. When police the arrived, they found the telephones and electricity lines. We have a weird homicide. The scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird... One. A couple of murder... Not many people commit a crime so horrendous that the press choose not to report on it. On April 28, 1961, a man was born who would be placed on Japan's most wanted list before even killing a soul, but would go on to kill more than seven people in a crime so horrible that reporters refused to talk about him. So if you like your coffee hot but your bones chilled, sit back and start your day with a morning cup of murder. Futoshi Matsunaga was born on April 28, 1961, in the Kokorakita ward of Kitakusu and grew up in Yanagawa. He was known as a good kid, charming and educated, but did have a habit of getting himself into trouble, which is how he ended up getting a junior high girl pregnant and marrying her when he was just 19 years old. However, this didn't stop him from making company with other women, and was known to have at least 10 mistresses, including an old schoolmate named Junko Ugata. Junko was a sweet girl with a passion for teaching children. She completed her qualifications and became a well-known and beloved kindergarten teacher who never called in sick and always put her kids first. That was until she suddenly passed out and was given a week off only to never return to the job she once loved. Rumors swirled that she had found a man, though none of them had any idea the kind of monster she had entangled herself with. Futoshi, who was still married, had promised to marry Junko, but her mother refused to let her daughter marry such an abusive man. Futoshi responded to the denial by raping Junko's mother and convincing the young woman that her family hated her because of a previous suicide attempt and that she would be better off just living with him. She agreed and left behind her family for the dangerous man. Around this time, Futoshi purchased a building to house his futon business, a building where he began administering electroshock to his employees, shouting about seeing spirits, speaking about religion extensively, and embezzling about 180 million yen, which is about $2.2 million in U.S. currency, through fraud and blackmail, which is what landed him on Japan's most wanted list. In April of 1993, Futoshi convinced another woman to leave her husband and run away with him similar to what he convinced Junko to do, and told her that Junko was only his sister. She agreed and left with her three children. The following September, one of her children died under mysterious circumstances, causing the mother to send her remaining two back to their father while she remained with Futoshi. Shortly after, he defrauded her of 11.8 million yen, about 145,510 US dollars, before her life mysteriously ended in March of 1994, though there is no evidence definitively tying Futoshi to either death. Later that same year, Futoshi blackmailed a man named Kumio Tureya and held both he and his daughter captive in his apartment. The pair were shocked while Kumio was forced to eat his own feces and his daughter was forced to viciously bite him. Kumio succumbed to his injuries on February 26, 1996, at which point Futoshi convinced his daughter that she was the one responsible for her father's death and was ordered to dispose of his remains. They were pulverized and tossed into the ocean near the Kunisaki Peninsula. Not long after Kumio's death, Futoshi decided to scam an acquaintance of the deceased man and convinced her that he was a graduate of Kyoto University, who was going to marry her. Instead, he took 5.6 million yen, a little over $69,000, and confined both her and her daughter in his second floor apartment until the woman jumped from the window in March of 1997. She was placed in a mental hospital and Futoshi released her daughter. The following month, Junko left for work and failed to come home. So, furious, Futoshi contacted her family and threatened to blackmail them with her mother's 1985 rape. When that didn't work, he faked his own suicide, which lured Junko out of hiding and back into his life where he continued her brutal abuse. He also raped Junko's sister around this time and conned the family out of 63 million yen, over $777,000, after which he held them captive and subjected them to psychological torture, similar to brainwashing techniques used by cult leaders. With a mental hold on the family, on December 21st, 1997, Futoshi convinced Junko to shock her 61-year-old father, Takashi, until he took his last breath. And when her mother Shizumi's mental state began to deteriorate, he convinced Junko's sister, Riko, and her husband, Kazuya, to strangle Shizumi to death on January 20th, 1998. Weeks later, they would do the same to Riko while their 10-year-old daughter, Aya, held her mother down so her father could get a good grip on her throat. Kazuya was the next to die on April 13th, 1998, after being confined in the bathroom and starving to death, after which Futoshi made Junko and Aya kill Riko's five-year-old son, Yuki. The only person left in the family was 10-year-old Aya, who was shocked, tortured, and mind-controlled all throughout her captivity. How do we know all this? Because the daughter of one of Futoshi's first victims, Kumio, was still inside of the apartment. On June 7, 1998, she was forced to strangle young Aya, after which Futoshi and Junko dismembered and boiled the remains of the Junko family and disposed of them in the washroom or in the ocean. In July of 2000, Futoshi found his next potential victim when he convinced yet another woman to run away with him. By August of 2001, she willingly gave Futoshi 20 million yen, over $246,000, and her twin children. Things for Futoshi seemed to be going according to plan, until January 30th of 2002, when Kumio's daughter, after years of captivity, was finally able to escape from the deadly apartment. 
Unfortunately, he found her on February 15th and brought her right back home, where she was further tortured with electroshock. She escaped yet again on March 6th and, this time, made it to police before Futoshi was able to find her. She was 17 years old when she walked into the police station and told her gruesome story. Both Futoshi Matsunaga and Junko Ugata were arrested the next day, and the twins, along with the couple's two children, were taken into police protection. At first, the media reported that the couple simply held their victims captive, but when they found out the real details of their story, many refused to report any further. Futoshi and Junko were charged with the murders of Eya Ogata, Takashige Ogata, Shizumi Ogata, Yuki Ogata, Kumio Torea, Riko Ogata, and Kazuya Ogata over the course of about a year. Because there was no physical evidence tying Futoshi and Junko to any of the murders, Kumio's daughter became the prime witness explaining how she was starved, shocked, sprayed with cold water, and forced to eat stew made of her father's body parts, while Junko calmly confessed the parts she played in the murders. Testimonies that would become the only real source of evidence against Futoshi. He, on the other hand, insisted that these stories were false and simply fabricated to make themselves feel less guilty. Regardless of his insistence, on September 28, 2005, a court found both Futoshi and Junko guilty and sentenced them to the gallows. A few years later, the pair appealed the verdict, and in 2007, Futoshi's sentence remained the same, but Junko's was changed to life imprisonment after the degree of brainwashing she suffered was taken into consideration. Because of the strength and resilience of Kumio's daughter, a very dangerous man was taken off the streets of Japan. A woman who works every single day to put the pieces of her life back together and rise above the horrific part of her childhood I am sure she wishes she could forget. Thank you for joining me in my morning cup of murder. Please join me again tomorrow to hear what terrible thing happened on April 29th. Don't forget to rate and subscribe and let me know how you like it. If you want to help support the podcast, there's always Patreon or just sharing it with your true crime obsessed friends. And remember, stay safe. Today's episode is sponsored by Fire Bee Honey. If you were looking for something unique and absolutely delicious, then look no further because I'm about to tell you about my latest obsession, Fire Bee Honey. Fire Bee Honey is honey with a kick and the perfect ratio of sweet and heat. This honey is handcrafted in small batches to transform the flavor of raw honey without compromising its amazing health benefits, which is what makes it stand out from traditional hot sauces. They use the perfect blend of flavors so even non-spicy lovers can enjoy. We use honey a ton in our house, but wanted to spice things up with a little more flavor. And let me tell you, this stuff is a game changer for sure. My son and I are big chicken nugget people and honey is our go-to dipping sauce. But recently we switched up our traditional honey for fire bee honey. And let me tell you, I may never go back. Not only is it delicious, but there are no added sugars or nasty preservatives. So I feel really good about feeding it to my family. And if a kick isn't your thing, fire bee has flavors like cinnamon, vanilla, elderberry, and chocolate that would be perfect for baking or a fancy cup of tea and other items like spicy honey beef jerky and spicy honey barbecue sauce, which my husband promptly took and made the most amazing pulled pork sandwiches with. So if you are ready to spice up your meals and enjoy some flavor while still reaping the benefits of raw honey, then Fire Bee is the place for you. Get 15% off your purchase when you order two or more bottles by using the link www.firebeehoney.com slash morning cup of murder. That's www.firebeehoney.com slash morning cup of murder for 15% off the purchase of two or more bottles of Fire Bee Honey.